from the Lord. Anytime you hear me say that there's a word from the Lord, meaning that I study, I've been meditating on this word, amen, since last Sunday, amen, and I just pray that God would bless you, amen, through his word. But if you have your Bibles, you can prepare, amen, to get ready and go with me to Romans 12. I'll be reading verses 1 through 13, and when you have it, please say amen. But let me make one thing clear on today, amen, first of all. Amen. I give honor, amen, to my Apostle Washington in New Haven, Apostle Valley Washington. Amen. And to our husband, Elder Washington, the co pastor, and to Overseer Rosa and Carter upon this rock ministry in New Haven. I truly thank God, amen, for that woman of God and that man of God. Amen. For pouring into my life, amen. Hallelujah. I come to tell you on today that there is one that's coming that's greater than me. And he's going to baptize you with fire, amen. I only can tell you, amen, that I can baptize you with water. But there's one that's coming, I'm telling you. He's greater than me, amen. amen. Some may say, Pastor, you preach an awesome message on today, to God be the glory. But there's one that's coming that's greater. And as children of God, amen, we have to be ready to always take the lowly place. Let's not esteem ourselves higher than anyone else, amen. 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 That's pride, amen. How many love God in this place? Yeah. Come on. How many believe that God has brought you to this place? Glory to God. So the Bible says in Romans 12, I'll be reading verses 1 through 13. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I believe with you to give your bodies to God because all he has done for you. Let them, be, let them be a living sacrifice, talking about your body. Amen. This is Paul, amen, talking to the believers. The kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. Yes, my Bible does read different than yours. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Then you will learn to know God's will for your life, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think that you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourself. Measuring yourself by the faith God has given us. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part have a special function, so it is so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body, and we alone belong to each other. It's, listen, I'm going to verse six. It's, it's because Christ went to the cross and died for us. It made us, amen, into his body, one body. Verse 6 says, In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is, to serve, is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is your if it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, listen, take that responsibility seriously. And if he have and if you have a gift of showing kindness to others, do it. Gladly, Verse 9 says, don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with, gen with genuine affection. And take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy. But work hard and serve the Lord. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble. And keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Something. Hospitality. 
Y'all gonna always mess up one word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This is not the time to esteem ourselves, amen, higher than we really are. No matter what happens in life, folk is going to wrong you. The Bible says in Romans 12, the Lord says that revenge is mine, amen. And we need to make space, amen, for God to deal, amen, with our enemies. Pastor, what are you saying? Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes, amen, when we're being wronged by folk, amen, we like to get in the face of folk and tell folk how we feel. Listen, he said, revenge is mine. In the word of God in Romans 12, he said, do not pay evil for evil. If we just step back and realize that the Lord is there, is there to fight our battle, amen, I come to tell you on today that victory, amen, is ours. I was sharing with missionary on this morning and the Lord gave me the illustration when I was talking to her. Can you imagine if you're going to buy some Oreo cookies and one whole row of your cookies didn't have the cream in the middle? That's that space that God is talking about. He is saying, listen, leave space for me to deal with your enemies. The battle was never yours. It always, amen, has belonged to the Lord. Come on, somebody. My throat is a little weak this morning, but I'm believing God that he's going to get me through this. So my topic on today, are you ready for God to use you as a sacrifice? Are you ready, amen, for God to use you in the same way that he used his son Jesus? Ah, if he was to come right now and say, sisters and brothers, listen, I want you to go to that cross. I want you to die for this generation. Are you ready to be used, amen, as that sacrifice? Amen. This is a word from the Lord. Uh, people of God, it's time that we present our bodies, amen, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Here's the key. It says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing, amen, of your mind. Ah, this is our temporary residence, amen, hallelujah. The things in this world, amen, as believers, amen, don't pertain to us. Amen. amen. Yes, he tells us to go out and propel the people to come to Christ. That's our job. Amen. Our job is to put our hands to the plow. But this is a temporary residence. Amen. This is not your permanent address. Uh, come on. We're all on borrowed time. Amen. Hallelujah. We're just down here on earth on borrowed time doing what God has called us to do. Remember, it's one body, one church, one faith, and one baptism. Come on, somebody. Do we believe God in this place? of God, when we present our bodies, amen, unto God, amen, not unto man, but unto God, we will be careful the way that we treat our bodies. See, we have to understand that this body, amen, it don't belong to us, amen, it belongs, amen, to the Lord. Uh, you have to understand that, that this body is not yours, amen, come on, it was a gift from God, amen, that you may have, amen, life, amen, the Bible said that he breathed into the nostrils of man and then man became a living soul. So it's a gift that God breathed into us, amen, and given us the ability, amen, to provide, amen, for our families and given us the ability, amen, to worship him. Uh, as a child of God, amen, I understood, amen, listen, that I had to stop beating up my body, amen. I had to understand that, that my body, amen, that it didn't belong to me, amen. There were some things should not have done. Amen. Whether I was in an argument with someone, whether I was in a fight, amen, my body had no business having a black eye. Come on, somebody. Amen. My body had no business having bullet wounds in it and, 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 and stabbing wounds in my body. Come on, somebody. But we take our bodies and we treat it any kind of way as if, amen, our bodies belong to us. Uh, so, when you're not thinking of yourself higher than anyone else, amen, I'm going to talk to the women for a moment. Amen. Have you seen a man on the street, the ones that we call less fortunate, amen, we call them winos, we call them bums, we have all types of names for them, amen. Would you go out there today, amen, listen, as a woman of God, amen, and marry a man that's in that condition? Would you take him into your home, amen, and show him kindness and do things for him that the Bible tells us to do? That's what 
God is saying. God is saying, listen, I don't want that body all beat up. Amen. See, we want to bring that body to God when it ain't no more good. Amen. Come on, I'm running ahead of myself because I, I love the word that God has given me this morning. People of God, amen. But listen, I am here to tell you on today, not only will he transform your mind, I want you to catch this. When we surrender to his will, amen, he will also transform our bodies. Yes. Anybody want their bodies transformed on today? Come on, you know how bad of a condition your body is in. You know if your heart ain't right. You know if your kidneys are failing. Come on, you know if you have cancer. You know if you have a sickness that you can't get rid of. Do you want God really to transform, amen, your body? Huh? As a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. You ever seen somebody, amen, and you ain't seen them in a long time, and they look better, amen, than they looked the last time? You said, wow, the last time I seen them, their teeth was missing, they had no front teeth. The last time I seen them, their clothes was a mess. And then you see them, amen, maybe about a year later, amen, and there's something different about them. That's because God has transformed their bodies. But first, before he transformed your body, it has to in your mind. It's time that we think on the things of God and not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. I want my body to be a living sacrifice. Amen. I want men to see me and say, hold up. I once knew him. Amen. But something different about him. See, God can change your identity and the twinkling in the moment of an eye. I don't care what condition the body is in right now. I promise you, if you just give God four or three good months of your life, I can promise you that you won't look the same way that you looked on yesterday. Come on, somebody. The bottom line is, we just want God, amen, to find us acceptable. It don't matter what man think about us. It don't matter what they think about us on the job. The only thing that matters is what God has to say about us. We just want him to find us acceptable. Acceptable unto God. Come on, somebody. I have to warn you, as a child of God, amen, you will never be accepted, amen, by the world. Uh, come on. Listen, if you've been in church over 10 years, 5 years, and you go back out to the world, amen, listen, this is what's going to happen to you. You walk in the club, folk going to see you and say, hold up. Wasn't you just recording your pastor on Facebook Live? Didn't I see you in the background in the church every Sunday with your hands uplifted? What are you doing here? The world is not going to accept you back. Once you have, have, have transformed over, amen, into Christ, amen, now is the time, amen, to remain in Christ. It's time to leave that old stuff behind you. The Bible said that old things will pass away and behold, all things will become us to have a new start on today. All the hell that we've been through all this week, all this year, come on, and from the beginning of this year to right now, we some of us been through hell. God is saying that, listen, I want you to have a new start in life. The choice is ours. Come on, somebody. Uh, glory to God. Please understand, only God, amen, can do it for us. Man can't do nothing for us. It wasn't your choice to be here on today. It was God's grace and his mercy that led you to this ministry on today. The Bible says in Romans 12 and 2, let God transform you into a new person by changing, amen, the way you think. Somebody has asked me a question. Y'all like asking me, Pastor, amen, what are you saying? If we say that God changed us, we could no longer revert back to our old ways of thinking. Amen? Ah, glory to God. When things get hard, we cannot go back. As an ex-drug dealer in the beginning of my transformation coming over to Christ, when things went wrong in my life, when I needed something done, the first thing came to mind was, listen, I can go back out there and I can make a couple of thousand, amen, and I'll be all right. But I come to tell you on today, don't let this world, amen, form you. Don't let this world make you think that you got to revert back to your old ways. Listen, the devil is a liar. He's the father of lies. If the world was someone wronged us, 
the first thing we do, amen, we say, oh, he's going to pay for that, she's going to pay for that. Man, we go get our guns, we go get our boys, women begin to braid their hair back and two cornrows. Some of them even got, some got fancy snakes, they started doing one braid straight down the middle. They get that thing called Vaseline. Vaseline's been around for about 75 years. Come on, somebody. Your grandmama fought with Vaseline. Your grandmama before her might have fought with Vaseline. And here we are taking on the same spirit, amen, fighting with Vaseline. Come on, somebody. Once he transformed your mind, amen, by the renewing of your mind, we don't think the same way that we used to think. We don't act the same way we used to act. When we come to Christ, we change a lot of things. But see, listen, change first must start on the inside. What are you saying, Pastor? He said by renewing your mind. Where is your mind? It's on the inside of your skull. Come on, somebody. So change has to start, amen, on the inside. Uh, Glory to God. Not only will he transform your, your body, but God will also, amen, transform, amen, your mind. But he tells us, amen, executive pastor in verse 2, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world. Uh, pastor, what does all this mean? People of God, hear me. You have been bought, amen, with a high price. Don't forget that. Everyone sitting here today was bought with a high price. So you must honor God, amen, with your bodies. First of all, I keep telling you over and over again today that your body does not belong to you. Let me help you on today. Somebody might be feeling a little confused, but let Pastor help you on today. We come to God, amen, when our bodies are all worn out and beat up, right? That's what we do. Come on, folk. Listen, it's a hospital. We come here when we're going through stuff. Let's just keep it 100. Amen. Yeah, it's very rarely you see somebody doing good, things going well in their life. They got all the money they want and they just walk into church. You have to go through something, amen, in order to find God. Come on, somebody. Amen. That's why we all came to Christ. Yeah. Amen. amen. It's okay, amen, to say amen. I like that. I heard a lot of amens on that. It was okay to say amen this morning, amen, because God is a good God. We don't prostitute our bodies. We don't tattoo our bodies all up. We don't pour alcohol into our bodies, put all types of drugs in our bodies. Some of us even cut our bodies. Some of us, amen, don't even clean our bodies the proper way. He said to us in his word, we should present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Nowhere in his word does it say as a dead sacrifice. It's time to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. It's time that we live in the things of God and not in the things of this world. Because only what we do for Christ is going to last. Anything that we obtain in this world, amen, I come to tell you, amen, that you is not going to take it with you when you leave this world. Amen. It's time that we make our bodies a living sacrifice and not a dead sacrifice. Come on, somebody. Amen. But a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, amen, unto God which is our reasonable service. God is looking to give each and every one of us, amen, the same measure of faith on this morning. He said, let them who have an ear hear what he want to say this morning. We have to be willing vessels at this hour, amen, to do what God has called us to do. We wonder why we go through so much in this lifetime, amen. We go through because of rebellions. We go through because of disobedience. Amen. God is looking for an obedient generation at this hour. He said, can he come at least find one? Amen. Come on, that love him. Amen. How many in this place can truly say that you love God? I can truly say that I love him. Because if I didn't love him, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. So we come to him all beat up and worn out. And he, is ex ex and he accepts us, amen, that way. Come on, he accepts us, amen, with our nasty attitudes, our mean and nasty, amen, to others, for no reason at all. Pastor, why do the so-called Christians act this way? Let me help you. Paul is talking to believers on today. This word, amen, it's not for the world, it's for believers. We're the one who sit up in church nasty and, and, and treat folk any kind of way, but God, listen, Paul 
is talking to the believers. Amen. God, amen, has a word on today. In Romans 12 and 1, he said, amen, dear brothers and sisters. So that's how we know that he is talking to the believers. He didn't say, amen, listen, to the world, to folk that's up the world. He said, dear brothers and sisters, in verse 1. So God is talking to the believers on today. Paul wants us to know something. Catch this and hear me. It's called, amen, title without time. Huh? Let me say it again. It is called title without time. What does this mean? The church have given out titles before folk, amen, had the time, amen, to be trained. It's okay to say amen. 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 What the church needs to do now, all churches all over the world, amen, the Bible said that we need to know them that labor among us, but what happens is, amen, we see folk doing good, amen, for a little while. We get all excited for them and their families. We be like, wow, God is doing the good work. We begin to put titles, even though God has called us to put titles, but sometimes, as pastors, we move too fast. Yeah. Every time God say a title, sometimes it don't mean for us to say it right away. Sometimes we got to be still and wait on God the right time to release the title. Yes, so a lot of folk has received titles before times. Not just regular, amen, clergy. I'm talking about apostles, bishops, amen, pastors, preachers, teachers, prophets, evangelists, deacons, ministers, elders, evangelists. A lot of folk have received titles before time. Come on, somebody. So again, we come to him bad and bad shape. He cleans us up. We looking all good now. And just that quick, the devil put in our minds. I want you to hear this. This is what happens when we start looking good, when we come to God. We came a mess, and we go back out, amen, look classy, you know what I'm saying? We was watching that movie last night, and I said, it was three ladies in this Lifetime movie. I said, the one in the middle, she was the oldest. I said, she classier than both of them. Y'all know how classy folk look. They got a certain standard that they live by. Their nails is done, their hair stay done, they keep their makeup on, you know what I'm saying? You know, they, they, they walk like they got it together. They walk like they the baddest thing in the earth. Y'all know how the men are, men, they may see them dressed, they gotta get the hottest sneakers that's out, hey amen. They gotta keep that wild of money in their pocket. They walk, they walk like they like they bow legged. No, you, 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 you nobody in your family was bow legged, brother. Daddy, your daddy walk straight. Your mama walk straight, and they, they put on that, you know what I'm saying? Like they you know what I mean? They cool. They just the baddest thing in the world. We know folk like that. Amen. You look all good. He looking all good. It's time for you to leave the church and go. Amen. This is what the devil was telling you. And go back out there and get what's yours. I say to that, get what? Go back out and get what? What's out there that you want? What do you really feel that you left out there and you came to Christ, but it's that important for you to go back out there now that you think you're looking good? Uh, come on, this, gonna get, this thing right here about to get good. Do we stop to take a moment and wonder how God feels when he invests so much in us and we just get up and we walk away from him because we are feeling, amen, ourselves? We esteeming ourselves higher, amen, than we really are. How do you think God feel when we keep turning our backs on him, leaving him over and over again? The word says in 1 Corinthians 6 and 20, it says that we was bought, amen, with a high price. I'm telling you, people of God, you was bought with a high price. The word says, amen, we was bought with this price so that we can learn the way, amen, to walk with Jesus. This is not, not nothing that you go to the store and you're spending a few dollars on. You go into the teller saying, yeah, let me, I want to buy this for my life. No, you was bought with a high price. His blood was shed on Calvary, amen, so that you and I, amen, may have this life that he called, amen, holy and acceptable unto him. Do you really think that he gave his life for us to treat him this way? Do you really think that? of God, he gives us too many opportunities to get it right 
over and over again. What does what does he say, amen, in 2 Corinthians 6 and 17? He tells us to come out from among them. Who's them? The world. And be separate. Touch not the unclean thing. And he said, I will receive you unto myself. We can't keep touching all this nasty stuff that has nothing to do with God. Amen. He did not say come halfway out. Yes. He wants all or nothing. Why? He said it himself in Exodus 20 and 5. He says that I am a jealous God. Yes. He don't want us halfway out. Yes. He said either hot or cold. You know what Ellie said? We look warm. What he'll do? He'll spew us out of his mouth. We have a decision to make. And that's, that decision has to be heaven or hell. But it has to be for real. Time is running out. Time is getting shorter and shorter. I come to tell you that time is not on your side. Hear me. God is talking to somebody on today. Lately you've been feeling like a man throwing in the towel. Wait, wanting to give up. God said, not yet. He said, when you throw in a towel, he said, listen, I throw it back to you. Why? Because I am not done with you yet. Listen, don't miss this, people of God. When you say no, amen, God, amen, says yes. So when you feel like you're going through and you want to throw in a towel, amen, God said, listen, throw it back. Amen. We keep walking back. Arm of the law. Come on. He can grab you anytime he wants. 
But you have to, amen, do something. You got to put your hands to the plow. He, he wants to put you in a promised land, but every time he reached down to get you, you you pulling away from him. You like that little kid? No, 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 I don't want that. I want to go, I want to go. No, no, I want that, I want that. You want everything that you see in the store. We act just like little babies. We cry for it, but when God is trying to reach his hand out to give it to us, we just keep pulling back from him. I'm not ready yet. I, I, I'm still seeking that old thing that I once had. I'm not ready to turn my body over to a living sacrifice right now. There's some things that I, I need to get done. My birthday coming up next month, so, so I can't fully commit to you right now, God. I got, I got to get this alcohol, amen. Come on, I got to have this 50th party. I got to have this 40th party that I'm waiting on. I already told my friends and family, listen, you know what we're going to do on my birthday? I'm here to tell you today. Christians who think they are smarter, amen, than God. Please, people of God, as a true man of God, amen, let go of this attitude. I'm telling you, let go of this attitude. Don't carry on in this attitude. It's not of God. Why, pastor? Because I love you too much to see you go to hell. The attitude of wanting to party and do all these things, we have to come out of that he said, come out of the world. He said, touch not the unclean things of the world. And then he will receive you, amen, unto himself. There's no other place I want to be but sitting at the right hand at the fire of the Father at the end of the day. Talk with Elder Kevin this morning, amen. I want my life to be a legacy. Amen. Come on, Kobe Bryant lost his life, amen. He's not that big talk anymore. The, the media done moved on to something else. But we as the world, we are keeping Kobe Bryant alive. Folks still put them on their Facebook page, Instagram, and all this stuff. Kobe, his legacy is going to live in the world. It's not going to live in Christ. So when we look at past preachers and teachers, bishops, amen, before me, they have a legacy. If you go to YouTube, you type in the word preaching. You're going to see G.E. Patterson all over YouTube. That man been dead for some years now, but his legacy live on. Come on, somebody. I don't know about you, but I want my legacy to live on. I want my children, my grandchildren to know who I was. I don't want to be forgotten about. I want folks to say, listen, one thing about him, amen, he was preaching and teaching for real. He really loved God. Only what we do for Christ, amen, is going to last, amen. Come on, somebody. The Bible says in Proverbs 14 and 12, it says that there is a way which is seen right, amen, to a man. But the road thereof is going to lead to death, amen, and destructions. When you're doing things your way and not God's way, it's not going to last. We like to talk God. We like to do all that, but we don't want to live God. We have more words than action. Our words speak louder than our actions when it comes to God. We have to make a choice on today. Are we going to do this for real? Are we going to serve him for real? Or are we going to keep on living the same way that we've been living? Holy and unacceptable unto God. When he said live holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable servant. This is not the time to continue living unholy. Change has to take place on the inside first. You got to dig deep down inside yourself and find your purpose, amen, in God. We all have a purpose. We're all one body. Each body part functions differently. Your hands can't do what your leg do. Your hips can't do what your mouth do. But the problem is, we allow our tongue to roll all the way back into our hearts and pull out of things that don't pertain to God. We speak what's in our heart. That's see, see when we say something, you know they say they listen. They always say that when when, when a person drunk, they tell the truth. When a person drunk, you know what they do? They tongue roll all the way back down to the bottom of their heart and they pour everything up that they wanted to say to you. That's why you hear curse words you don't even know. The mug's drunk. 
they be slurring, but it be some new curse words. You ever heard a person drunk, they be cursing, man, them words be, man, you be looking like, man, what in the world, he just called her. <laughs> that's, how, that, that's how it works. We allow our tongue to roll back to the bottom of our heart and pull out things that has nothing to do with God. We gotta guard our tongue, amen. This thing is dangerous. It, the, listen, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And it was awesome. I was talking to the executive pastor. I was sharing with her about the word a little bit. And she said, you know what's so awesome about the tongue? She said, think how powerful it is. And it don't, it don't even have no bones in it. <laughs> you can knock a mountain down. You mean tell me I can really knock a mountain down with my tongue? Yes, I can. Listen, um, I got this mountain over here. I bought this property. I need this mountain. Listen, bring whatever tools you need to bring. I need this mountain move. I spoke it off of my tongue. It don't even have bones in it, but it's stronger than anything else that's in your body. Come on, somebody. You think because your fist knocks somebody out, your tongue can murder them. Come on, somebody. Not outsmart God. Either it's either it's His way or it's the highway to hell. It's your choice is yours. Again, are you ready to be used as a sacrifice? Are you willing to give up your family and your friends, your nice home, that nice car that you got, the fine clothes you got in the closet, for a bunch of folk that will not stop fornicating? In? and committing adultery, clubbing, smoking and drinking, doing drugs, lying, stealing, coming in and going out. Now, is that worth you being a sacrifice? Jesus did it. Would you do it? If you know that folk was still gonna live the way that they gonna live, would you do it? Let's be honest. We all sitting here be honest today. And God came to us and said, listen, are you going to be a sacrifice? I want you to go to the cross for this world. Man, we be sitting there, man, they be pushing us to that cross. We be slide, gravel, be kicking up off the ground, dirt. They got to drag you to the cross. You ain't going to go willfully. But once you get there, you might as well accept it and say, now it is finished because you ain't going nowhere. They done tied you up. Come on, somebody. Are we willing? Is it worth you being that sacrifice? Is it? Why can't we do it? Amen. Why can't we be that sacrifice of Jesus did it? He came here, he came down here as an example to show us how we're supposed to live. We're supposed to be willing to die for this thing called the gospel. No matter what happens. If a gunman come to come into church and murder folk, listen, we die for a good cause. We may not be ready, but God knows when we're ready. His timing is not our timing. The word said that his ways is not our ways. This thing been going on before the hands of time. The word of God said that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not going to change because you ain't ready. We have to become that sacrifice. I come to tell the world on today, the Christian that is playing church, I come to talk to the backslider, the saved and the unsaved. Jesus laid down his life because he knew you was worth it. He knew exactly what he was doing. He said that you was fearfully and wonderfully made. He said, I created you before the foundation of the world. He knew, amen, listen, what he was doing. That's why God sent this only begotten son. So that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is not the time for us to be perishing if we say that we belong to God. If we say that we saved and filled with God, Holy Spirit, why are we perishing? Can't nothing stop me from getting to the house of God. I've been feeling bad for the last three days, but it ain't going to stop me from getting to the house of God. I don't want to perish. I want to acknowledge him in all my ways so that he can continue on directing my path. It's a beautiful thing when God wakes you up at 1.30, 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning and you up and you reading his word when everybody else is asleep. Amen. That's when you can hear good from God. There's no distractions at those hours. Amen. Instead of turning the TV down at 6 or 7 while you read it, just what we do, we turn the TV all the way.
way down, but it's still so. So we read and we look it up. <laughs> That's distractions. Distraction is not only hearing, but it's also seeing. Come on, somebody. Yeah. People of God, it's time that we believe, amen, in his word. We all have the right to salvation, no matter how bad we messed up. We all have a right to this tree of life. We all was bought, amen, with a high price. The same blood that saved me, the same blood that changed me is the same blood that wants to change you. Come on, somebody, you got to believe God on today. The same blood that wants to change, amen, your life. Hear me. God won't help us. He won't save us. He won't change us if we are too high-minded. He can't operate in that. He said, I'm not having all the gods before me. So God can't do nothing for us if we high-minded. Because we're not allowing him to do anything, amen, for us. But the Bible says in Romans 12 and 3, he said, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. He said, now is the time to be honest in your evaluation of yourself. Pastor, what does all this mean? Okay, I'll tell you since you want to know. He is giving all of us a warning to step back and look at our lives, evaluate ourselves, and see, are we really fit, amen, for the kingdom? Do you believe in your heart that you are really fit for the kingdom in the condition that you're in right now? If God was to come back and you truly said that I'm going to heaven, he said, be honest in your evaluation. Come on. Uh, listen, listen, let me help you before you start saying yeah. Because the Bible says that, oh, listen, the Bible said that the same people are going to scarcely make it into heaven. Meaning that us who are being just and doing what God called us to do don't mean that we guarantee the spot sitting at the right hand of the Father. Come on, nothing is guaranteed, amen, when it comes to God because his ways is not our ways and his thoughts is not our thoughts. The only thing is guaranteed that we can have salvation. We can't have the Holy Spirit, but it's not guaranteed that we're going to make it through that pearly gate. Y'all know my MO. If they crack that door and I get a toe in, I'm going to try to force the rest of the door open because I want him to know that I'm serious about coming to heaven. I'm not going to sit there and minister and let him close the door and he say, oh, he really didn't want it. Sometimes God want to know, are we strong enough? Do we want it bad enough? If you want something bad, you got to go and get it. Come on, somebody. So what do God want? He wants us to be honest and repent of our sins. Somebody, amen, is saying, Pastor, can we really evaluate ourselves? Why not, I say to that? The Bible says in Romans 12 and 3, we just read it, measuring yourself by the faith, amen, that God, amen, has given us. So I said, measure your faith, amen, by what God has given you. So in my closing, we're getting out of here. If God called you to prophesy, prophesy with faith. The faith that God, amen, has given you. If your gift is to serve, then serve well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage, be encouraging. If God has given you leadership ability, take that responsibility very seriously. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold on tight, amen, to what is good. The Bible says, do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Meaning, I don't care if it's your neighbor. So that everyone can see. It didn't just say that your church family can see. When you step outside these doors, amen, folks supposed to look at your life and say, now that's an honorable person. They're living for God for real. No matter what I did, I took my leaves and I blew them in their yard. <laughs> and I see them go out there week after week. This is what they're telling their friends. They come out there after I blow the leaves in their yard. Now, I know they know the leaves come out my yard, but they go out there. They don't say nothing. They rake them up anyway, put them in a bag. Don't repay evil for evil. Amen. 
If your neighbors are wronging you, leave space for God to deal with them. You pray and you give it to God, and God will make them stop blowing those leaves in your yard. So, Pastor, where you get that from? I, when Minister Allison first bought her house, I was at her house doing some work. I just happened to peek out the back window. I seen her neighbor with a blower blowing all those leaves in her yard. I recorded him. And I showed her, I said, listen, he was blowing all these leaves in your yard. I don't think he's doing it no more now that he knows that the house is occupied, but he thought the house was still abandoned. But you can see that somebody cleaned up the yard, so why are you blowing the leaves in it? It said, do things in such a way that everyone can see your honorable do all that you can to live a live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, talking to the body, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scripture says, I will take revenge. I will, re I will pay them back, saith the Lord. If your enemies are hungry, your job is to feed them. If they're cold, your job as a Christian, amen, is to offer your coat. Amen. Yeah. It's time that we remain gentle with the world. Because we're the only light that they see. Listen, they're not bad people. We, we can't look at the world and say they're bad. They're they doing bad things. Yes, they're sinning. We come to church to learn how to stop sinning. We're looking for that, that, that hidden sin. Some of us don't do the outer sins anymore as far as like the clubs and, and, and all that. But we, we, we have that inner sin that's in us. We, we're not doing what the word of God said. We're seeing folk hungry that wronged us. We won't even feed them. The last time when I pulled up, I was going to give him a dollar. But he cussed me out so bad. I ain't giving him nothing no more. Continue to give to him. Revenge is his mind, said the Lord. It's not our job to pay evil for evil. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. And doing this, you will, you will heat burning coals of shame on their heads. You're going to wake up their conscience to the way that they've been treating you when you do good to them. Because you're going to confuse them. They're going to say, hold up. I ain't been nothing but nasty to her. I ain't been nothing but nasty to him. So the, 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 when he heat the hot coals on their head, the burning coals, listen, that's just waking up their conscience to who you are in Christ. The behavior that you display to them day in and day out, year after year. When they curse, you bless them. Heat the hot coals. That's what we want to do. Let God fight for you. Stop fighting for yourself. Because I can promise you, he never lost the battle. He never lost the war. United States is powerful because of God. It ain't nothing that the soldiers is doing. He gave them the ability to make well-made weapons of destruction. So that we could be any country that comes in our face. And that's how it is, amen, in the spirit realm. You have power on the inside of you, amen, through the Holy Spirit that is willing to fight for you. If you just take a moment to believe it. Take a moment to know who you are in God. Take a moment to know that you are more than a conqueror. Take a moment to know that you are powerful in God. Don't let no devil make you think you ain't nothing. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and in due season he will exalt you. Humble yourself. It's okay. We're going to get angry sometimes. Y'all know that. You get angry sometimes you feel good to let off a little steam. Nothing wrong with that off a little steam because it builds up ministers so much all, all day, Brother Tan. We let that stuff build up, boy, but when we blow, I got emoji on my phone with my head. Come on, over. I said the thing by that one. You say that. Oh, yes. Sometimes you got to pop. And it feel good. Brother G, I was telling the church on um, Bible study night, I was telling them that I had a dream where I cussed. I was cussing like crazy. I'm on, I know I'm on Facebook. I was in my dream cussing like crazy. I was like, you know what? And I knew I was a pastor. I said, you know what? I'm getting all this off. I said, I'm, I'm here now. Once you're there, you might as well go ahead and deal with it. Because you got to repent anyway. So I got it all out. So I might not have a dream like that for another 15, 20.
what he is, amen. Uh, or maybe I never have another one. I don't want one, but and listen, it felt good. The argument me and my wife had on uh, about a month ago. A little words we had. I came here, I told the church, I listen, my life an open book. I said it felt good to argue with my wife to talk back. I ain't talked back in so long, but she said something, I said something, she said, man, look at here, that's how it's gonna go down then. I start feeling a little soft, like a little, little weak. Around her all day. You know that. I work with her all day. So that little argument, it felt so good to me. I'm telling y'all, listen, married couples, listen. Listen, married couples. If you ain't arguing a long time, say years go by, you still ain't arguing. And you get that argument, you ain't gonna never forget what Pastor just said to you. When you do argue, you ain't gonna wanna shut up either because the time was right. He's been marinating you the whole time. That man been aggravating you, he been getting on your last nerve. And, and the woman would be the one always holding their peace, right? So he has been marinating. He's just been getting on your last nerve. And when that thing gonna feel right, when you let it go, you're gonna be like, hey, when they leave, when they walk away, you're gonna be like, uh-huh, I thought so. Then you go in there, you can flip them dishes over and wash them. You be feeling good, too. I felt good since Selena argued with her. I ain't doing this so long. An argument don't mean that your spouse don't love you. You guys are just disagreeing on some things. But we, we, we say hurtful words. We say things that we can't take back. But at the end of the day, it's okay because God still loves us. Sooner or later, we'll get it together under the leadership. Amen. This is the anointing that's on the house. Amen. Hallelujah. So anything that, that anything you want to say, amen. You, you always say when we get home, don't worry about it. I, I gotta preach too. You ain't got nothing to say. First of all, he thought he won the argument, but he really didn't. I just checked out at a certain time. I was like, I'm done. And I let him go ahead. And he felt good in that, but you was talking to himself. It felt good, y'all. It felt good. Can we put our hands together for God's word on today? Amen. We're about to get out of here. It's okay. It's okay. Amen. At the end of the day, to understand that God wants to transform our minds. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, meaning the same mind that his son had. He wants us to have it. We all go through stuff. We've been, we've been warring, amen, against our flesh. If there's anybody here today that's not seen...